Coming in hot from Arizona, this is Trevor and Troy Howard, and you're on So Tell Us Time. You can have everything you want in your business. Sometimes you just need a little help. Every business owner would love to charge more for their services, but sometimes you can sacrifice long-term loyalty for a short-term profit. Creating the right rituals is key to your business having success. Are you tired of competing with your competitors? Guess what? You don't have to compete if you create. Hey, everybody. Welcome to another episode of So Tell Us Time. We're so excited to be with you guys today. We've got an awesome podcast Uh, You know, we just got through the month that has spring break, and (laughs) that is always a fun one, I think. I mean, it's like the kids are home, and, you know, they're wanting to go do things, and we're still trying to work, and kids don't understand that, you know, there is no spring break for me. There is no (laughs) summer for me. (laughs) And it's like, so... You know, business always seems for most people to take a little bit of a dip during that time, you know, especially if you're working with consumers, which most businesses are. So I think we're all glad to have a new month started and to kind of get up and going. So we're excited for the new month and we're excited for today's podcast. We're talking about the foundation. We're going to be talking about your foundation in your business. What we have found is a lot of times People don't build their foundation properly because they're just getting started. They're wearing all the hats. They don't have the money to set it up properly, to implement everything that they should from the get-go. So they do what they can with what they have. But as the business continues to grow, the foundation becomes a little weak, starts to have some of those cracks in it because it has not grown with them and they invest their time, energy, effort, and money into a portion of the business that actually doesn't change the foundation. So I'm trying to say it without going into any details that are going to take over Troy's, you know, the rest (laughs) of the podcast (laughs) and Troy's outline. Because like we know, I don't read the outline. I just kind of wing it. Troy's very organized and I'm just all over the place, which you guys know. And I think that's what you love about me. So, all right, Troy, let's get into it. This is going to be a good one. And our clients, I guarantee it, whether they're big or small, they need to hear this. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to talk about what we call the startup foundation. So again, think about you're building this foundation to build your business upon. And when you're a startup, you know, when most people first start their business, they obviously don't have a customer base already in place. So their first priority is to find new customers. So they really kind of build the business, the marketing, everything around it is all geared towards, I need to find new customers, find new customers. And they're constantly on the search for new customers, which is really good. That's what you're supposed to do, right? You need those new customers when you're a startup. Um, But they're building that foundation, always looking for the next new customer, right? And they spend very little time building any processes or systems around nurturing their existing customers and maximizing their existing customers. Um, And we see this happen all the time, right? You start out as a small company, but as you grow, you get bigger and bigger and you're adding new customers on. And all of a sudden you kind of reach this plateau where you're like, I'm not growing like I was before. And when you actually start looking into your numbers, you realize, oh wait, I'm losing a bunch of customers right? I'm adding new customers in, but I'm also losing a lot of customers because you have nothing in place to make sure that those customers stick around, right? So here are the facts. You know me, I like the facts. The cost to acquire a new customer is five times the cost to retain an existing customer. So it is very expensive to find a new customer versus keeping that existing customer that you've already got. So you've got to spend just as much time, energy, and effort in retaining customers as you do in acquiring the new customers. Mm. The other thing that I love is uh, it says the average business loses 10 to 25% of their customer base every year. So if you think about that, if you aren't adding any new customers, then you could literally be out of business in four years. You would have lost all of your existing customer base. Yeah. And that's crazy. That 10 to 20%, let's just go high and say that 20%, right? that 20%, it's going to cost you five times each one of those customers 
to replace them, to replace that existing customer you're losing, right? Each one. Yeah. That's insane. So that's like 20% times five. <laughs> like, yeah, exactly. Holy crap. It's yeah, it gets very expensive. Yeah. So, however, if you retain those customers and continue to grow your business with new customers, you could literally double your business every four years. Wow. By retaining them. So, you know, that's where people, a lot of times they don't realize they're like, hey, I, I'm adding on new customers and I'm adding on the, you know, the same amount of customers that I've always added on, but my business isn't really going anywhere. It's mm -hmm. because you're losing just as many customers as you're adding on. But if you can fix that problem, now all of a sudden you look like one of those awesome businesses out there that you're like, man, how does that guy or that girl keep getting bigger and bigger and bigger? Why are my competitors just growing like crazy? It's because they're most likely getting new customers, but also retaining customers. Um, and that's how you get into that, just doubling that business over and over and over again. And, so, and here's the thing is, is yeah. if you're thinking, oh man, I do have a terrible attrition rate. Like it's bad. Don't worry. Like every business goes through this and some never get out of it. And that's why they end up losing their business. I know, uh, huge companies that were bringing on 1400 plus customers a month. And you would think, holy cow, that is phenomenal. But when we dove into it and we talked to them, they were actually losing 14 to 1500 customers every single month as well. So they were stagnant. They were like, they were dying, literally dying, but they were dying to just bring on as many clients every month as they were losing. Like they were drowning, trying to stay even. So don't be, yeah. don't be, don't worry. Even the big dogs got it, you know? Yep. And like Trevor pointed out at five times the cost oh. to get that new customer versus yes. keeping the customer that they already had. Yes. So um, how do you build the right foundation? Well, in order to build the right foundation, you know, you need to put just as much focus and money into retaining the customers that you have as you do in finding new customers. And again, this we see this a lot in businesses. You don't put anything in place in the beginning because you don't have any existing customers. You're not focused on them. You're like, I gotta, I gotta focus on marketing. I gotta bring more customers in the door. I gotta do door hangers and mailers and whatever it is. And that's what you focus on again and again and again. And then all of a sudden you realize, oh man, I haven't paid any attention to my existing customers. I have no systems in place to make sure that they're happy. So you've got to make sure that you're splitting that energy between your existing customer base and finding the new customers. Now, how can you do that in a very cost effective way? Well, automation is one of the best ways that you can do that, right? Because as your customer base grows, it's going to be harder and harder for you to manually keep connecting with those customers, right? You're just not going to be able to do it. You're focused on taking care of these new customers that have come in the door, but how do you take care of those old customers? So automation is one of the very best ways to do that. And we're going to talk about a couple of different ways that you can do that today. Number one is nurture campaigns. Like this is one of the best ways that you can keep in touch and nurture those existing customers. I'm going to give you a couple of different ideas of nurture campaigns that you can utilize. So, and again, I want you to be thinking automation, right? Automated messaging, all of that because you're, you're not going to have time to manually be reaching out to all of these customers. No. You need to be doing it in an automated way. And you, so, even if you have employees and you think, oh, they sit around and they don't, they're not going to do as good of a job as automation, to be honest. They're not. Yeah. When you put automation in place, it actually makes your employees, your current employees shine. Yep, absolutely. So let's talk about a couple different types of nurture campaigns that you can be utilizing. Uh, one of the one of the best is promoting additional services, right? So having a automated campaign going out, reminding your customers of the additional services that you have. So for example, you know, if you're a pest control company, yes. you might be reaching out to let them know that, hey, we do no, don't forget, we do weed control, you know, we do termites, we do scorpions, all of these other things, right? That may not be in, included in your basic package. So making sure that they know about those additional services with carpet cleaners, for example, you know, Hey, by the way, yes, I cleaned your carpets a couple of months ago, but what about the upholstery? You know, what about your couch? Have you had that cleaned or maybe your tile and grout? Did you know that I do tile and grout as well? Right? Because a lot of times 
your existing customers, they don't know about your additional services. So making sure that you are promoting those to them. Another great one is to ask for referrals, right? The great thing about asking for referrals is not only are you reaching out and connecting with your existing customer base, but you're actually turning them into a lead source as well. So asking for referrals is a great way uh, to follow up with your existing customers as well. Another one is promotional offers. This is really important, right? You know, running specials, getting it out there. Um, I'll actually tell you a story. It was so funny. Um, I have a jacuzzi in my backyard and uh, I noticed that the jacuzzi cover was getting pretty worn and this last storm like blew it over and kind of cracked it. And I was like, oh man, I gotta buy a new cover. And I was like, oh geez, it's been like six years since I bought my jacuzzi cover. Who did I buy it from? Well, guess what? I know exactly who I bought it from because I get an email from that company every single month letting me know what their monthly specials are. And the funny thing was, I didn't remember the name, but I went to my email and I just did a search and boom, the day before they sent me an automated email that said, hey, you know, it's been a while since you bought your jacuzzi cover. It might be time to replace it. Here's a coupon for a discount. And I'm like, what the heck? Like, are these people like looking over my back wall? They literally knew and sent like the day, you know, the day before sent me an email saying, Hey, it's probably time to replace it. And I'm outside going, man, I should probably replace that. Right. <laughs> so I saw that email and then went outside and subliminally you were like, I need to replace my cover. Probably. Your head. <laughs> exactly. But it worked. And here's the thing. It had been, I looked at it. It had been six years. Wow. since I had ordered from them. And every month I got an That's email. Awesome. Oh, and by the way, the other great thing about it was, hey, don't worry. You don't have to measure. We remember what you bought. That's so awesome. I click a button and it pops up the order form and it had everything, like all my measurements already in there. So I didn't have to spend 30 minutes out there measuring it and trying to figure out the right size. But again, if they had not been nurturing me for six years, mm -hmm. they would have lost out on that sale because I would have just gone to Google, did a search and tried to find someone to, you know, meet my need. Yeah. But because they sent out one email a month, yep. I, um, they got my business back, right? That's so awesome. that's a great way to do it. Promotional offers. Another great thing is holiday wishes. This is really, really easy. Just have a nurture campaign that goes out, you know, for all of the holidays. Hey, you know, we just want to wish you a Merry Christmas. We just want to wish you a happy 4th of July right? You're getting in front of them multiple times a year and you're not selling them. You know, it's just a nice little message that goes to them. Um, another one is birthday club. How many of you have a birthday club? That's just one more point, you know, throughout the year that you can reach out to them and just say, Hey, you know, this is Troy from Troy's plumbing. And I just want to wish you a happy birthday, right? makes a huge difference. They're like, oh my gosh, why does my plumbing guy, you know, reach out on my birthday? That's crazy that he does that, right? That he remembers. But again, mm -hmm. they're gonna remember you because you remembered them. So that's another great nurture campaign um, that you can add in there as well. And again, every one of these touch points is just another way for you to retain that customer and not yes. let one of your competitors get in front of your customer before you. Yep. So anything else you want to add to that, Trevor? No, I love it. I think it's a, that is a perfect example of that business owners think if I talk to my customers too much, they're going to leave, they're going to go away, they're going to opt out. And you know what? That's true to a degree. There are a percentage of people that will opt out or, you know, say stop or whatever, but there's a larger percentage that we have found in our clients' businesses, in our businesses, the majority of them, they love your products. They love your service. They don't mind getting an occasional email. Like Troy said, once a month he was getting an email. And for six years, and he never <laughs> opted out. I have so many emails that I get on a daily that I have not opted out because they're products or services that I purchased and I like. And I do go back eventually and buy more products or services from them. And so I don't opt out of it, you know? 
And there's ways of saying like, hey, when you opt out, you're not going to receive, you know, any communication from us anymore. So if you need support or if you need help or anything like there's ways to deter people that are maybe just like, oh, kind of on the fence of opting out to not opt out. Um, you know, Hey, if you would miss, if there was any issues with the billing, you wouldn't be able to receive our emails, things like that, you know, and they're currently active with you. That's going to deter them. So there are techniques and strategies, but the thing is, I think the point of that is it's okay to communicate with your customers. You should be communicating with your customers. The only time it's scary is if you haven't been communicating with your customers and you just all of a sudden start communicating and then you're like, Oh crap, I'm going to, you know, get a bunch of cancellations or get a bunch of opt outs or whatever. Okay. In that case, then just start communicating with new customers, at least get better than you were, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> if you're scared to go back and be better for the ones you already have, then be better for the ones that you're gaining, right? Cause you're spending all that money. And that's, that's just the key that I want to drive home is when Troy and I were talking about this topic, we see over and over and over again, people spending, tens of thousands of dollars, millions, hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars a year to gain new customers. And that is great. That is wonderful. In fact, if, especially if you have it down like a well-oiled machine, we have it down like a well-oiled machine. We grow by 80, 60 to 80 clients a month, month over month. It is a well-oiled machine and we're looking to even improve that. But where we see people failing is in the foundation in the retention think of what your company could do is if if you invested not even maybe the same amount of money but you invested you set aside some money even if it has to be every month or you set it aside to build up that money so that you can buy the program buy the system you know uh buy the vehicle or maybe buy the the tool that is going to make that experience better for your customers, make the foundation of your business better. Who knows what that could be and mean for your company, but it will absolutely help your business continue to grow. And you know, as we said, you will save five times the amount of money on keeping that customer. So that's a really good number to know. You <laughs> can invest in your business in keeping customers because of that number alone right there. So, that's it. All right, guys, let's jump into the homework. Take a look at your business and see how much of your resources are spent on keeping existing customers. And I would say versus getting new customers. Take a, take a look at that. Get those two numbers. How much do I spend to get new customers and how much am I investing in keeping customers? Compare the two. Um, and then implement one idea from this week's podcast to focus on your existing customers. Implement one thing, better communication, text message, automation, you know, something along those lines that can help really kind of make the experience better for those existing customers um, and let them know, keep you top of the mind. That's really another thing we're talking about here is being top of the mind awareness so that they come back to you when they need that service or they need that product, whatever that is, right? All right, guys, we love you. We appreciate you. We will catch you guys on the next episode of So Tell Us Time.